What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you on how to create a complete first person horror game. It will cover all the things that you need. You will end up with a true first person controller, an intelligent AI that will be searching you, a system to hide in cupboards, and much much more. It's gonna be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is create a new Unreal Engine project. In my case, I will be using the latest Unreal Engine version, 5.2. In your case, you can use whatever version you want, but I recommend using the one I'm using right now or above. So we are going to go ahead and select the third person template. This is because we are going to be choosing the true first person approach, which will mean that we'll place our camera inside of our character's head to create a super realistic effect. So let's select blueprint, the entire platform, well desktop or mobile, whatever you prefer. Quality preset, you can choose whatever is better for your hardware. Story content, I recommend to take that on. It will give us some tools that we can use later on. Ray tracing, depending if you want it or not, and your hardware supports it. Then select a prior location, and lastly, a prior name. So let's go ahead and put so horror game. And let's go ahead and hit create. All right, so the editor has opened. So when I create a new project, what I like to do is go into window, go into the content browser, and just place it over here in the bottom part of the screen, I just prefer to have it fixed so I can just access my assets way easier. Okay, so as you can see right now, we just have our third person character and so on. So let's go ahead and put our camera in the player's head to get that realistic motion and effect. Let's go into third person, blueprints, and open this up. And now what we can do is go into the viewport and we can get our camera boom and just go ahead and put our arm left to be a zero. So now we'll be like without any separation whatsoever. And we can just get our camera boom and just put it inside of our player's mesh. And now as you can see it's a child. So now we have the option to anchor it into a socket. Basically, we're gonna anchor it into a specific bone. In this case, of course, it will be our head. So we can just put it in our head there. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into the location and reset this. So now it will be perfect there. And we're gonna just put it a bit forward as you can see over there. So now, as you can see when I press play, we have our camera inside of our player's mesh and we can move around. But there's still a few things that we have to change. Right now you can go backwards and you face the camera mesh and so on. There's a few things basically. <laughs> so what we're going to do is go and go and select the character movement component, go down into the rotation settings and disable orient rotation to movement because now if we are going backwards we don't want our character to orient backwards because it will see our mesh as we did. Let's also go into the class defaults, search for jaw and enable this. This will basically turn the camera, uh, basically the whole player uh, to where the camera is aiming as you can see. So now we have the controller perfectly set it up. Now let's go ahead and make one thing so our camera can be a bit more smooth, uh, smoother basically. And it's a very good trick. So what I can do is select our camera boom and search for lag. And here I can enable camera rotation lag. And then in the camera rotation lag speed, let's put something like seven. And now if I compile, go back here, as you can see, now the camera is super smooth. And also it will give us like a type of horror movement effect. Now maybe it's a bit too smooth and too, you know, with a bigger transition. And interpolation so the smaller this will be the greater that smoothness will be right now it's very look as <laughs> very harsh but let's put it something like maybe uh, nine or something like that you can play around with the setting to get what you want but I think nine will work great for me as you can see now let's also set the character movement component and let's go ahead and uh, put the max walk speed to be maybe around uh, 350 so it will be more like you're walking and a bit more horror as you can see. So now we have a full body IK as you can see, full camera movement with a wrist and head body motion, smoothness and everything. So now we can go ahead and continue on as we have our player movement set up. So now let's go ahead and create a flashlight for our player. So let's go inside our follow camera and let's just go ahead and add a spotlight. And this will be our flash light over here. So we can put it a bit more forward, so it will not be overlapping with the camera. We're gonna put a bit more. And we can change the intensity to get what we want and so on. We'll play around with the values in a second, 
but basically the inner cone angle has to be a bit bigger and maybe the outer cone a bit smaller so it'll be like basically concentrated area in the inner angle and then the outer angle like a more of a outline you know uh, tone out uh, type of light intensity uh, so we can play with the settings i can just go you can see now we have a cool flashlight you can change about the intensity you know the angle we're gonna make it a bit smaller and so on you can play with that of course right now we don't have our environment or scenes set up yet so it's daytime so it will not be really noticeable as you can see it is already looking pretty cool so we have our flashlight ready set it up now let's go ahead and make that we can turn it on and off so for that let's create an input so let's go into this third person folder input and so on and inside of actions we can just create right click go into input and create an input action this will be ea underscore flash light and let's go ahead and open this up make sure that it is set as the to bool you can see input so on we don't have to really change anything everything by default will work but now we have to go into the uh, asset collection and just add it so our player can use it and now we can assign a key in this case let me put to be maybe l as you know flashlight or light uh, well actually f i think it will be a bit better you can put whatever you want really and now with that i can just save go back in a third person character and let's go into the bank graph so now we can use our uh, action event as we use it in here is right click ea underscore flashlight and on here what i can do is create a new boolean and this will be flashlight uh, active you could say so now we can just get our flashlight and make it not boolean so if it's not on we're gonna do a branch so an if statement we're gonna put in the start that was so when you start to press the key so if we don't have our flashlight active right now, we're gonna enable it. So I can just go into the flashlight and just set. And now there's a few things here. We can just set the visibility. And this will be true. But now for our uh, false condition, gonna copy paste this and this will be false. And also gonna select the flashlight in my components and set up the visibility to be disabled at the beginning. So you won't have your flashlight still at the start so now i can turn it on and off as you can see well not off because um uh, we didn't set the boolean so now of course when you interact with it this should be now it is true and here now this should be when it's false because if not of course the variable will not update so we can never go into the other option right so now we can turn it on and off so let's just add a quick sound over here in my case i'm gonna add it in both places so i can just put it at the beginning and it will be just play sound i'm gonna be 2d nothing crazy and now we have a few things i'm gonna be placing probably the click on button it will sound good and let me lower it a bit to maybe point uh, seven and now with that said when i interact with my flashlight i put a little sound as you can see so we have now our flashlight set up so let we go okay so now what we are going to do is create a sort of drawer that we can hide from our AI that will be chasing us and so on. So what we can do is just right click, create a new folder. This will be blueprints. So everything will be organized, which is key when creating a product. And I'm gonna right click and create a new blueprint class. In this case, it will be an actor because it will just be placed in a world and we can interact with it. Let's name this BP underscore like drawer. I mean, you can really change it later on to whatever you want and it doesn't need to be like a drawer, but in this case, I'm gonna be using a drawer. Um, so what we're going to do is basically add a static mesh and in this case because we imported our starter content we have like a door frame and so on which i will use i know it's not really a drawer but whatever it will do the job <laughs> so let's select our drawer frame here and then let's also just change the name to uh just the frame let's duplicate this this will be the door itself and i can just go here and select the door and just move it to be inside of it kind of and let me just snap it there we go and let's go ahead and rotate a bit by default so it will be open i mean you can decide later on if it's open by default or not um but with that said make sure that the collision is set to block all dynamic and what we're going to do is now uh, also just add a new component and in this case this will be a cube and this will be used to be the side one and basically also, let's put the door inside the frame, so it's a bit more organized. We can just neatly put it there. And the side one will just be basically squashed like that. Uh, maybe we can make it a bit smaller, like 0.1. Uh, 
and you just put it in one of these sides here and basically it will just fill in the box okay um so let me just do this over here like this like this uh yeah like this i guess it will be cool uh, maybe a bit bigger like this okay and then you're gonna just duplicate this put it into the other side and then to duplicate this you just go ahead and no ee -E, no <laughs> uh side three and then rotate this like this around 90 degrees and just place it on the other part now i'm doing this real quickly but you can put a bit more detail into it and i'm gonna just double this and this will be the uh, floor you could say and i just rotate this minus 90 degrees make it smaller put it into the ground like this great it up and then just duplicate this this will be the uh ceiling we can say and now we just put this into the top and now we have our box and we can select all the sides and floor and ceiling and whatever and we can supply a wooden material and uh, which we have with the sorry content for example this one uh, made this a bit too made this one yeah yeah you can play without with that uh okay so that's great i can also change the element here to be also some wooden you know aspect let's do also this and uh wood let's put this one here there we go and we have our drawer over here i can just drag it into the scene you will see here and maybe it's a bit too small i see in a second uh it's great okay so i can go here and you can see i can go inside and there we go you can see that our, our door doesn't have a collision even though we have has set here the uh, block hole dynamic this is because the mesh itself doesn't have one so i can just double click in the mesh to open up and just go into collision and add a box simplified collision and we just add a simple box around it and now you can see that it will have a collision so i can just go here and i can now collide and then we can later on shut it and so on uh, let's go ahead and add you say trigger so we can interact with it so now drawer let's select the root just add a box collision and this will be our trigger so when we go ahead and go through here we will need to be able to enter or exit or whatever you want I just fill it in a bit here and just fill it in like this make it thinner and just uh, kind of put it maybe a bit aside maybe bigger like this you can play around with the trigger and make sure that this set as overlap all dynamic and let's go into the on component begin overlap and on here gonna get the actor just cast to the third person character and making sure that it is our third person character which is interacting and if so uh, we are going to use right now print and this is a test over here so we'll see then when i go here i go inside my box you can see hello in the top left corner of the screen so that will work um but what we're going to do instead is go ahead and create an uh, interface uh, interaction so we can just press the e key and enter exit whatever we need so let's go ahead and do so so let's go into the third person folder input uh, actions right click input action ea underscore interact we don't need to even open it by default will be okay i can just go into the collection add a new mapping and this will be our ea interact i'm gonna assign the e key over here save close there we go and i can just go into my third person character right click over here ea interact and then i can just go ahead and just say uh, get overlapping actor. Sorry, we don't need to do a for each loop. So we'll go through a loop for every object of an array. In this case, the array will be the get overlapping actors. And this is because if we are inside this trigger of here, it will be inside uh, our character will be overlapping actor. In this case, we can interact with it. Uh, so now we can leave the class filter empty, so it will detect any object that we want. And now we're going to do is create an interface. So let's go into blueprints, right click, go into the blueprint a category, create a blueprint interface. BPI underscore interaction. Let's open this up. The new function will be interact. And we can just do it generic like this, compile, save, and close. And now I can just go here and say interact, and it will be that. Now, of course, we are only gonna be doing this if it contains that interface. So we can just do a DOS implement interface bpi interaction and make a branch and we'll only continue with so so basically you're gonna be wondering why did we do an interface 
where an interface will allow us to communicate between different blueprints uh, by not directly casting. So I will not need to do what I did here about casting into this specific third person mode ever so on, uh, or even even using the begin overlap. Basically, it will detect whatever object I am overlapping, and if that object contains the interface, I can interact with it. So to add an interface into an object that I can interact, I can just go into class settings, implement the interface, add BPI interaction. And now I can just go into the interface section, double click, and now as you can see, when whatever our interact, uh, player interacts with something, it will be called the code from here. So in this case, we would put our camera to be inside of it and so on. So basically what it would do is get the player uh, character and then set the uh, transform. In this case, it will be the actor transform. So we'll basically just change the location and rotation to be inside. I can just right click the transform, have different anchors over here. And let's just go into the root and add a skeletal mesh. And this will be a reference point. So I can just add my Manny or I think we're using Queen right now. It doesn't really matter, but uh, Queen simple. And I can just rotate it, put it in place. And basically our player will go into that point when we, you know, move it inside basically. And I can just make sure that the collision are disabled. And also let's go and enable hidden in game because this is only for us to see and to put in the rotations, put a bit up. So now I can just get the reference, get the, in this case it will be the world. Okay. So the world location and put it there. Actually what we can do instead is just get the world transform, right click split it. And now we have all the things. So I can just directly blast it uh, with one, only one node. So now basically when you interact with it, you will go into that position. We can test it out. I go here. I'm inside the box, I think. Press E. You can see that now I am inside and I can go outside too. Uh, we also should also close the door. So what I can do is use uh, rotate the door a bit. So by default, it will be like this. Um, so I can just go ahead and get the door set rotation. In this case, it will be the relative rotation because it is in local from that blueprint. And right now the rotation is this, this one, right? Um, but I would change it. So I can just put this to be at zero. Yeah, exactly zero. So like this, it will be great. So you can go here and enter. You can see the door will be locked. I cannot go out or anything. I can see my AI going out and everything will just work. Let's also quickly just make that we can uh, go out of the driver, of course. Uh, so what we're going to do is just uh, create a new variable inside. Well, you can say, yeah, inside, I think. And then here we're going to be setting it to be true. Uh, and then we're going to make a branch. And this will only continue, of course, if it's not inside. So if we are not already inside, we will go inside. <laughs> right. And if not, I'm going to be setting inside to be false and we can put our player to be out. So I can just get a reference and change the name to be the reference to be reference inside. And I'm going to duplicate this and put it to be forward there. And this will be the reference outside. There you go. And I'll move my player to be outside. So I can just get this and basically get all this. Copy paste, put it here. In this case, it will be the reference in uh, outside. Sorry. So this is yeah outside. So I'm be moving my player to be outside basically, and this set into false. And then door, we're gonna put. I uh, think it was I don't know how much uh, this value. So just copy and paste this in Z. Is that sorry? Uh, okay, I can put like hundred maybe. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And with that, that should go ahead and work. Of course, our trigger will need to fill in the interior a bit more too, because now we will not be overlapping. So I can just go select my trigger and just expand it and put it more inside. I think like that will work. So I can just go, press E to enter. I will be entered. Uh, I cannot go out to whatever my door is closed. Press E again. I will exit. My door is open. Everything will go ahead and just work with our drawers. So now we can hide from our AI when it's created, of course.
Okay, so let's make some footsteps. So first of all, let's import our audio. But for that, let's right click and create a new folder. Let's name it audio. And now I can just go ahead and import my uh, you know, footstep. In this case, I'll be limited in the description. You can get the same one as me. Just drag it into the content browser. As you can see, we should be able to import it. If it did import. <laughs> footstep, drag it here. There we go. I don't know what happened. Now we have it here. Uh, so uh, we can play it. So what I'm going to do is just right click and create a in the audio category. What is it? Audio, there we go. Meta sound source. MS underscore uh, footstep. So basically, right now we only have one clip, which is this one. And if we play it a lot of times, it can end up very repetitive. So what we can do instead is change a bit the pitch every time that we play. So it will sound like a variation. But actually, we only have one clip. So you basically do some code. Let's double click this and just go and use play with player mono. So we'll play a sound. In this case, it will be our wooden footstep. And now what we can do is put our output mono to be here in our unfinish on unfinish. And then what we can do is get the pitch and do a random load. So every time we played, we'll change a bit the pitch, which will make it sound a bit different. So now I can put, for example, the minus between minus two and two. So now every time I will play it, it will sound slightly different. And I can basically increase a bit the uh, boundaries to make it sound even better. So that's it. I can now just go close all this and let's enter our character folder, mannequins, enter the animations, queen. And I'm going to go into the walk forward animation. And now we can start placing some uh, sounds. So I can just go into notifies, add a new track. It will be footsteps, footsteps. And I just in the right one is right click. And now if I play sound, and I can just play my MS footstep. I can just Control C, go here, select this, Control V, click here, Control V, click here, Control V. And now I'll play my footsteps. Whenever that's done, you can see. It will work and uh, now also let's create a sound automation so it can be in a 3d space so let's right click go into our audio category go into spatialization sound automation sa underscore character because all these sounds that will play will be through a character so this will be our inner radius it will be like the uh, inside this minimum radius we can hear like in 2d so let's drop it down to 100 uh, or even 200 and then follow distance is the max distance that we can hear audio. In this case, I think that 100 and uh, sorry, 1700 will work, but we can test this out. So let's quickly close this, open our meta sound, and go into source, attenuation, apply our character attenuation. And now if I drag it into the scene, you can see the two boundaries, the minimum one and the max one. The max one is a bit too big maybe, so let's drop it down to maybe uh, 1200. And it's a bit better, yeah. So I can just press play, and it will be sounding in, in 3D and so on. So later on, for our creature AI and so on, also his footsteps will play in 3D, which will be very handy. So now we have our footsteps set up quickly. All right, so let's begin to create our creature AI. So I'm going to do right click, create a new folder, AI, open this up, and just right click, and let's go into the Blueprint class and open all classes, and let's create an AI controller. And this will be AI controller selected. Let's call this VP underscore AI underscore controller. And this will be for a creature or whatever we have as an enemy. Uh, so now we can just open this up, go into the events graph, and on here we'll go ahead and run behavior tree. Now we'll just go ahead and create the behavior tree in a second. So let's do that. Right click, go into artificial intelligence, create a behavior tree, BT underscore AI. And then right click and create another blackboard, BD underscore AI. So basically, the blackboard will be assigned into a behavior tree. So the blackboard will be a list of all our variables that we can use throughout our behavior tree. When we start to touch it, you will stand a bit better. But let's open up our AI controller. Let's assign that behavior tree so it will run it. And then close this up. And let's open our behavior tree. And let's make sure that we have our blackboard selected as the one that we created. Wait, so let's close this. 
And now let's create our uh, character blueprint, our actual AI. Right click, blueprint class, character, BP underscore AI. Let's open this up, mesh, assign a character. Let's just put, for example, many, simple. Let's put it in the correct position. So minus 89 over here and then minus 90 over here. And now in the name class, I can just put ABP many. So we'll have the animations that it has. Great, so I can now go into the class defaults, search for AI, and this is very important. We have to go and change the auto possess AI to be in place in bold or spawned. And this one is just a prevention, a thing that I like to do. You can, just in case later on, you spawn your, your AI instead of manually placing it in the level. Uh, because if not, the AI will not be assigned, it will not work, and you'll see why it's not working, whatever. And it's just because this was not correctly set up, so like this will work. And then the most important thing is changing the AI controller class. So let's change that to our one that we created, which is BP AI controller. So now I can use compile, save, and I can just close this. Great, so now we have our AI created and assigned, so I can just go and drag it into the scene. Now there's a thing that we need to do in order to let our AI move around our scene, and I just go into quickly add to the thread, go into volumes and add a nav mesh bounce volume. So. Let's go ahead and fill in the whole scene. So I can just change the scale to be locked and let's put like 20. Now it will just fill the whole screen, uh, screen not <laughs> scene. And now if I press play, uh, P, sorry, you can now see the whole routes that our AI will be able to navigate. So that's great. Uh, can just press P again and there you go. Of course, right now our AI will not move because of course there's no logic. So let's start to create our logic. Let's go and open up our behavior tree. And what we can do is get from the root and add a selector. So we will have two sequences. We'll have a new sequence over here, which will be just the uh, search AI, well, search player, sorry. And this one, it will just be run, uh, randomly, you know, going through the level, searching the player. And then we'll have another sequence, which will be chasing player. And this one, the you know, enemy AI has already seen the player and we'll start to chase it. So for search player, let's go and create a new task. We just click this button over here. And now in the AI folder, let's create a new folder, tasks. Let's open this up and this will be our BT underscore task underscore and this will be, uh, you can use uh, roam around. And now we can just enter in this task. So. Let's add the begin play of this task, which is in their functions of right receive execute AI. This is like the begin play of our task. So when the you know test is being executed. So on here we're going to do is get the control pawn and just do a AI move to. And this will just sorry, I need to add a AI move to without putting any values. There we go. Now the pawn will be our controlled pawn, which will be our AI. And then our destination, we can just do a random point uh, in get random reachable point in radius. This will just get a random point, okay? Our origin, we can just get the actor location from this. And then we're gonna search around, let's do uh, 3000 from this point. Great. So now when we put this uh, 120, and then I can just do in success. I can just do, uh, it was, what was the, um, finish, uh, execute, there we go. And this, it will be a success, so it ticked on, and on fail, it will be, well, I'm ticking the success. <laughs> and there we go, so now our AI should wander around our level. Let's go back into the behavior tree and search player. I can just add my task, which I created, which is the roam around. And now when that finishes executing, I can just add in the right a wait. So I can just wait, for example, uh, three seconds, right? So our AI will wait three seconds. Now this should work. If I press play, our AI should start to walk around our level, stop for three seconds, and then go and search again another point. So that's working. Uh, let's also go ahead and start to, you know, add some animations and smooth out the movement. You can see when he turned, it was like very snappy. Uh, so let's go ahead and do so. So let's go into our BP AI blueprint, open full blueprint editor, uh, go into the co uh, class defaults and disable jaw because that would just 
override the rotation to be very snappy. We don't want that. Instead, we want to go into the other approach, which, which is select the character movement component, go down, and enable orient rotation to movement. So basically, rotate to where it is moving and with a smooth interpolation. So we just look much better. Great. So with that said, we need to create a new animation blueprint. So let's go here into the AI folder, right click animation blueprint. Let's go select XK Mannequin, create ABP, so animation blueprint underscore, and let's we'll just be AI. Now for that, let's also just right click animation legacy and create a blend space 1D. Let's select again our SK Mannequin, and now we can just name this AI underscore blend space 1D. So with our blend space, what we can do is transition between different animations depending on a value. In this case, it will be a speed. So in the horizontal axis, you can split speed and then the maximum will be 600 because it's our max uh, right now walk speed for our AI. There we go, as you can see, 600. Uh, actually, we'll go ahead and drop it down to 350 also, you know, actually 300, so it's a bit less than the player. And let's change that to be 300. And then what we're gonna do is enable snap to grid, it will just make things a bit better. And now I can start to drag in my animation. So let's search for idle. Uh, in this case, I think we're using the many for AI, so let's use the MM. Let's drag it into the left part of the screen. And then let's search for a walk, and let's put it in, it will be the uh, forward. MM, once again, put it into the right. And now if I hold control, as you can see, and drag it across the timeline, as the speed increases, I will be transitioning smoothly between both animations. So that's great. I can just close this and open up my animation blueprint. And here, what I can do is get in my AI blend space and drag it in and connect it. Now, depending on the speed, for example, if I put here 300, it will start, as you can see, to walk. Let's put it back to zero and go and right click and create a variable because this speed should, uh, will need to be you know, controlled by our AI moving in the scene in real time. So what we can do is go into the then graph from our owner that is controlling this animation blueprint. I can just get the velocity and from the velocity, I can just use this vector length node to convert it into a nice float. So now I can just use it in here. So I will be setting the speed. Great, so that should work. I can go into my AI mesh and now just putting my ABP AI and now the animations should go ahead and work. Let me also start to close some things around because I have a lot of tabs open. And as you can see, the AI will start to work with its animations and you know work very smoothly. Another thing that we can do is smooth out a even bit more the uh, plan space. So I can just go here and add some smoothing time, like literally like 0.2 seconds, that would be enough and it will just make a more realistic movement, so there you go. So let's go ahead and make that our AI can sense our player and start to chase him and so on. So for that, let's open our BP AI and I'm gonna be adding the pawn sensing component. And let's go ahead and hit enter. As you can see, now we can change things. This is the side radius and the sensor interval and the vision and so on. So let's drop the vision to be around maybe 70 degrees. So the player is only inside of this. And then we're gonna disable here notices and make sure that uh, C pawns is enabled. Only sense players, we're gonna be enabling this because we will not have any more AIs in the level unless you want to have more. In that case, disable that. Uh, but we're gonna leave it enabled and then updates should be enabled. So with that said, um, as you can see, now we should be able to see our players. So on C pawn, gonna be making sure that that's our player in this case I'm gonna be doing a tag so hashtag because it's way more efficient than just casting into our third person if, if the casting succeeded we know it is our player I think a better option is just to create a tag so what we can do is go into our third person cat blueprint which you know we shouldn't rename to first person so let's do the uh, BP underscore first person there you go let's open this up and I'm gonna be changing uh, in the class defaults tag. I'm gonna be adding an actor tag, okay? Not for a specific component, it's gonna be an overall. So in the actor one, and it's gonna be just player. Now make sure there's no spaces or whatever. It has to be exact. So now here I can just type player. And again, it has to be exact, okay? Make no errors. Let's make a branch. So if this is true, it means that it is our player. So what we can do is get our AI controller we go 
And now what I can do is get our blackboard and this will be also self. So we're getting our AI controller, getting the blackboard. As I mentioned before, the blackboard is all of our variables that we can use throughout the behavior tree. Uh, so let's create a new blackboard variable. Let's go into AI, VD AI, let's create a new key and this will be C player. Like before it will be, you know, false. So now what we're going to do is go back into our AI and here it will be set a value as boolean. So there's no accessing of like if we are a normal variable of, you know, just getting the example, the speed or whatever is universal. So it's any variable that, that is a bool. But here we can pass the name. So we can just make, make a little name and here will be, well, scene player, which is the one that we set up. Again, the name has to be exactly the same that is in here. Actually, I made a mistake and it's all joined together. So, you know, be careful with that. Make sure to put that there. I think I clicked that. Okay. Uh, so now true here, put this here, the boolean will be true because, well, it has seen the player. Um, so that would be great. We are enabling that variable. There we go. So now let's go into our behavior tree. So let's open this up and let's add a condition. So what we can do to decide if we go into this part or this part is create a decorator. So I can just go into my search player, right click, add decorator, and it'll be a blackboard because we will be seeing a blackboard variable. In this case, we're gonna be selecting our key, which is our variable, and in this case, it will be scene player. And in this case, it will be if it's not set. So if scene player is false, we'll be able to go here. Now in a board, we're gonna be putting this cell. This basically, if this result changes, so this variable changes, we'll go ahead and a board of the self uh, sequence, go up into the selector and then decide whether we go here or here. In change in player, we're gonna do the same thing, but the opposite, if it's set, so just right click, add the creator of blackboard, select our scene player. This is very important, make sure it's not self factor, this is our variable, which is scene player. And then in this case, it will be is set. And once again, self, so we can literally on a board and decide if we go into another one. All right, so let's create a new task, which will be from our blueprint base. And so I'm putting this bt underscore task underscore and it'll be chase player. So let's go ahead and open this function, receive execute AI. So it's like the begin play of our task. And now on here, what we can do is just do an AI move to. And now we can pass our control pawn into the pawn. And then target actor, it can just be our get player uh, character. So we'll be following our player. Uh, now the destination, if we have a target actor, we can leave it as default. Uh, the acceptance radius, let's drop it a bit up in 220 because if not, it will get too close to the player and it's a bit messy. And then on success, gonna just do uh, on, I don't even remember uh, how was the, <laughs> the other uh, finish execute. Okay, the node. Uh, so finish, execute, this will be true. And here it will be false and you know, there we go. So that will be great. That will be said. Um, everything will, should just, just work. So let's go back into our behavior tree. On here, we're going to go ahead and drag in our task, which we created, which is chase player. And then every time we can just make a wait of maybe, you know, 0.1 second. So it can be a bit, you know, smoother and leave a bit of space. So that should work. If I now press play, our AI should see us. You can see now it's chasing. So everything is going ahead and, you know, working. Uh, so that's great. Now, of course, we should make that we can also, you know, escape from our player, uh, enemy, sorry. But first of all, let's make that he can catch us and so on. All right, so to set our attacking, we're gonna be importing an animation. In this case, I will be leaving this free uh, animation asset pack in the description. You can just go ahead and get it, unzip it, and you get all of these animations. In this case, we will be using this uh, paired push shove attackant. So let's drag it into our content browser, into our AI folder. Close this and now for our skeleton, instead of using the new UE5 one, we are going to be using our old uh, UE4 one. So our SK mannequin underscore skeleton. Say import all and now we have it over here. You can see the animation how it works. Uh, basically, we have to now retard it into the Unreal Engine 5, but because we're using the template, we already have that done. So I can just right click, uh, sorry, it's a great new folder, put uh, UE4, drag it into move here, and now I can just right click. Go ahead and retard it, duplicate and retard it, and select the retarder from UE4 to UE5. And I can see that will work. I can choose now my AI folder, okay, retard it, 
and now you can see we have the animation there perfectly going so that's great uh, everything we have it you know set up so now what we can do is play this animation whenever our AI gets close so let's right click and create an animation montage this will enable us to you know play this animation from whatever part we want the blueprint but to be able to play an animation montage let's go into our ABP AI so to our animation blueprint and then graph and we have to add this node which is the default slot and this will just enable us to play animation montages in between it's very important so now we're gonna go into our um, behavior tree add a new task from our blueprint base task bt it will be bt underscore task and uh, this will be attack player and now this will be receive execute ai and on here what we are going to do is basically play an animation and so on we're going to be doing this from our ai blueprint so we're going to be communicating so what i can do is just go from here and use cast to bp ai normally i do interfaces but because we're all going to be using one cast in this whole ai system to just go ahead and use attack every once in a while when our you know enemy reaches our player it's okay to use cast so on here what we can do is let's close everything that we will need uh, in this case uh, this okay let's go into our bp ai and let's create a new custom event just leave all that that we don't need right click custom event and this will be attack player in this case it will just catch it okay so now i can just go ahead and play a montage and it will be with this skeleton with the mesh and the monster to play will be the one that we imported great so we're gonna be playing an animation let's make a new variable and this will be attacking and we're gonna only be you know attacking if we are not already attacking <laughs> so let's get attacking again not boolean so if it's not true we can attack okay and then we'll go ahead and set up attacking you know to be true because we're attacking and then when it's uh, on complete, we're going to be setting it to false because we finish, you know, attacking. And with that said, in here, we're going to be doing a sphere trace by channel. But don't worry about that. Instead, we'll do it in a second. And basically, sphere trace by channel, we create like an invisible fear in a specific position. And if our player is inside, we'll apply damage or catch or whatever we're going to be deciding. Great. So with that said, I can now go into my task and now call attack player. And I will go ahead and do so. And then from that, I can just make a bit of a delay. In this case, more or less the animation length. So I can just open up the montage and I can see that it will be 1.27 seconds. So I can just go here, wait 1.27 and then here do the finish execute. I've ordered now, finish execute, there we go. And this will be a speed success, you know what I mean? So with that, that's great. Everything will just go ahead and work. Um, so now, we can just go ahead and really test that out but we have to add it so instead of waiting i now gonna be doing the attack and it's because um, what is it what is it was uh, attack player uh, because when this is completed i will go into this next one so now when our plus play I go here you can see it reaches and we do the attack and everything will just go ahead and work so now let's go ahead and do the sphere trace and so on so to do our sphere trace, let's go into our bb ai Let's go from our uh, play montage and just do a sphere trace uh, as do in this case for objects. So this will just create an invisible sphere I just, as I just mentioned. So let's create a point which will create this sphere. So let's create an arrow. If I know how to type, there we go. And this will be our attack a trace point. I'm gonna be pasting this a bit more in front and up. So the sphere will be created around in this point. So I can just get this, do get weld location and create that. So the start and end point will be there. And actually the end point what we can do is just get the weld rotation and then go ahead, get the forward vector and just times this by a value. So basically we're gonna get where the uh, arrow is looking which in this case is in this direction 
they're gonna be applying an offset so it will end here so basically great more fun uh you know let's say we could say uh like a not cylinder but more of a enlarged sphere we could say and now we can just right click convert this into float and it will be like maybe 200 forward and i can just add the wall location into this new offset unplug it into the end great so with that said i can apply a radius let's do like maybe 50 okay i'm gonna play with that in a second the object types will be what objects it will be detecting so let's make an array and we can just put pause because our player is a pawn in unreal engine the return value we're gonna make a branch so we will only continue if we have actually detected something let's get our odd hit and do a break so now we have all the parameters and information about what object we have hit in this case let's get a hit actor and let's do damage it should be damage right apply damage sorry apply damage there we go and we're gonna apply a certain damage let's do like 10. now we're gonna be doing that it will automatically catch you so it will just fade and so on so really there's no health or damage system but i just like to use this you know just apply damage because we can just use the receiver so uh in the player side and just do the fade and so on so there will not be any health system so we can put this in for duration so we can just preview our last spirit trace so now we can just go and we can see how this works now what i also just did in a cut which is uh, basically reduce the radius to 25 and put this to be 70 so it's a bit better okay so i recommend putting those two values um so now you can see that the spirit trace is perfect um so now what we can do is in the player when we receive that damage we can just do the fade out and restart the level and whatever we need so let's go ahead and do so so let's go ahead and close all the tabs that we don't need open up the third person blueprints first person blueprint and now what i'm going to do is right click and add a new event which will be event and any damage so when we receive damage it will be called this it's like its own implemented interface so on here what we can do is go ahead and create a new widget and then here this widget will basically fade out everything and here we can also go ahead and disable the input so our player will not be able to move anymore and we will play a sound in a second and so on so let's go in to the content browser just create a new folder call this ui open this up right click use interface for a widget blueprint use a widget dot ub underscore and this will be our fade out let's open this up and now what we can do is in the play add a canvas panel so we can start placing things on our uh, screen let's add an image and now with the anchors while holding control so the left control i can just click this one then we expand through the whole screen i'm going to change the brush uh sorry the color and opacity to be you know dark and i can just put the alpha to be zero at the beginning um so with that said i can just change this name to be just the fade image and now with that selected i can create a new animation this will be fade and now i can select this animation and add that fade image so now I can start adding keyframes. So the first keyframe will be the color and opacity with this totally uh, with the alpha zero. So add a keyframe here with this button. Now go and maybe 75.75 uh, 75 seconds. And I can just open this up for the alpha to be totally one. So totally opaque and add another keyframe. And now after some time, I could go ahead and fade out. But we will not fade out at this same animation because what we are going to do is restart the level so it would not make any sense because we will not see uh, get to see that fade out uh once again right that you know fading uh to back to the game so what we need to do is every time that we start the new game make it fade in and do the other thing so now you can see i just press play it will just fade out and we can just play around with the timings and so on a bit later so let's create another animation and this will be fade uh, out uh, so really this will fade in and fade out so let me just change a bit the name over here so fade underscore out and fade underscore in and i will change the name of the blueprint instead of fade out it should be fades okay um so now i'm here i can just select my fade out at my fade image and then it will basically go from full alpha at one will be an opaque to use after 75 maybe you know putting the alpha to zero and keep framing so we'll do this uh, so that's what we got uh, let's go to graph 
delete everything and let's make two custom events. So let's right click, custom event, this will be fade in. And basically in here, we're gonna get our fade in animation and just do this play animation node, okay? So we'll be playing that animation. And now right click, create right a custom event, fade out, and we'll do exactly the same, but with the other fade. So I can just do fade out animation, play animation, and now, with that said, I can just go into my player, create that WB fade so that I can just create it, and then just, uh, go ahead and use, uh, actually, where we need to create it in the gameplay, because we want to also fade in. So I just paste it here, so when the game starts, it will be created. And now I can just right click, promote this to a variable, so fades widget, okay? And now I can just get this and add it into the viewport, okay? So I'll add it into the player screen. So right now it will be empty, there will not be any fades or whatever because our alpha is set to zero. But now in here, I can just get my uh, fades widget and do the fade uh, in. And it will just cover the whole uh, screen. Uh, you will see that will work, you just go into my AI and fade out. So everything is working. Now let's go also in the begin play and do the fade out. Okay, so it will just like start already with the game like this. You can see it also be looks very cool when you start the game, you know. Let's see if our enemy AI sees us. Come on, Here we go, come in, boom, fade out. We should play a sound and so on, but it is gonna end up working. All right, so let's add our jump scare sounds and so on. So, in my case, again, I will be leaving them in the description. Uh, so, here they are. It's have the game start and jump scare. Uh, so, you just drag them into the audio folder over here. And now we have them, so the jump scares like this. Nothing crazy, and then game start. It's a very subtle, like, you know, when, when you start the game with a fade out. It, those little things adds a lot into experience and makes it more professional and polished, trust me. Okay, so let me just go into my first person character. When I do this, I'm gonna be play sound to D, and in my case, I'm gonna be playing that game start. So when the game starts, if I find it, where is it? Game start. Okay, let me just open this up. Audio game start. Select it, put there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Easy way. Yeah, it looks very cool. And, and then let's go into our thing here and we do our fade out. We'll also play a sound D. I'm gonna be doing our jump scare. <laughs> so now when our guy detects us and gets us, come on. It will play that sound, which is really cool. And later on, when we have the environment and other sounds, it will feel much better. Okay, right now it feels a bit off, but because there's like no other sounds right now, uh, so that's the thing. Let's also just go real quick into our enemy and let's just get rid so we can select it, Ctrl E to open this up. Let's get rid of the debug type to none so it will not get that line trace uh, out there. So there we go. Uh, let's also just make that it will restart the level so I can just make a delay of maybe a second and then open level. In this case, I'll be opening again the third person temp uh, right now. Third person map. Uh, there we go. There we go. We have the whole game loop. <laughs> cool. All right. There we go. So, yeah, let's continue. Okay, so now let's make that our AI can lose us because right now, once it has sees you, you know, seen you, it will just chase you, and whatever you do, get out of you know his sight or whatever, it doesn't matter. He will still chase you. So, uh, what we can do is open up our AI, and what we're going to do is get the begin play. So we're going to be doing one thing. The thing is that the pawn sensing uh, component does not have any form of on stop scene pound, right? So what we need to do is in a constant loop be disabling the scene player. So every couple of uh, seconds we'll be disabling this, right? The thing is that the on C pawn, because it has this sensing interval, will be also playing in a loop. So basically, uh, as this is playing in a loop, if he is seeing us, it will be constantly be refreshing to be true. And the thing is that if we go in a loop and be constantly disabling this, but with a lower rate, 
and uh, if he sees us, it will still be overridden and activating. But if he stops seeing, uh, seeing us, it will be, you know, instantly deactivated and it will just work. Okay, I don't know if it made a lot of sense. It's hard to explain, but once we get it working, it will make a bit more sense. Uh, so basically, let's make this sensor interval a bit better, so a bit better not basically more often. So we're gonna put this at point two. So he will sense us uh, more regularly, okay? With more, you know, a higher rate. Now in the campaign clay, let's go ahead and make a an, uh, timer, uh, set timer by event, and it will happen every point uh, four seconds or point five. We can leave it at point five. So because this rate will happen more often, uh, this will have like more priority basically. So now I can just make sure the looping is on. Okay, enable this looping is on, and now just get the event, create a custom event, and this will be um, stop uh, scene player. So now I can just go and put this up here, this here. I can just get this, okay, and just get all this, copy paste, put it here. And now disable this. Okay, very important. Make sure to disable that. Let's put this here. Let's get the, this over here. And put a bit up. There we go. So now you will see that if we manage to somehow you know escape from him, he will basically lose track of us and will continue into his walk cycle. So now he sees us. And let's try to hide him from him. It's gonna be hard. There we go. So he stopped seeing us and now he goes back into his patrolling as you can see. So that works now. And he sees us again. There we go. It's coming down. So that basically goes ahead and works. You can see it's coming. Now we have in this problem. And is that every so often, because it's in a loop, he will stop, you know, seeing us and so on. Uh, so what we can do is go and put the sensing interval to be very very high so maybe 0 0.05 and this will come uh, you know happen so often that there will not be any noticeable thing now still a bit uh, noticeable so we can also drop this bit up to maybe 0 0.8 and you know 0 0.0 maybe 2 uh, really this doesn't consume a lot of power or whatever and because our AI is a big thing we can allow this right um, so now you can see that is there we go now we don't, we don't feel anything and also look guys it also did look a bit good it's like if it's like i don't know possessed all of that so like he's vibrating a bit you know like uh, it, it can end up being cool but for now this will be great okay so now let's go ahead and set up that you know we can actually hide from our player over here so let's do that and i mean i just realized that of course because we already have this set up i can just go and of course if it doesn't catch me <laughs> so let's put a bit more out there so now he's coming to me but if i go and hide oh there we go he, because i have my door and everything he will stop seeing me so now he is going and wandering again because that system is already working so there we go we don't have to you know manually communicate with him that you know he's you know stop seeing the player automatically because we had the door and everything he will stop seeing me and he will go wandering so that's already automatically set up that's the cool thing of making modular systems so there we go so let's go ahead and make the final game loop, the end game. Basically, you will need to search for a specific weapon, so an item in the scene, and once you get it, you can basically equip it, and once the AI finds you, you can just, when it's closed, you know, uh, go ahead and kill him and you will win the game, right? Um, so let's go into blueprints and create this weapon item, however you wanna call it. So right click, blueprint class, actor, BP underscore, and this will be used, let's say weapon, um, and let's open this up. So right now, I will not apply any model, and I'm gonna just go ahead and make a sphere. Okay, this is just a bit temporary, don't worry about that, okay? But there we go, and I can change the material to be uh, maybe green. So I can see, well, maybe, uh, you know, yeah, this color. Okay, it doesn't really matter, it's just temporary. I can just drag it into the scene. Uh, for example, let's put it up here, and I can just grab it, right? So what we're going to do is add a sphere collision, and this will be our trigger. So if our player is inside of it, we can basically go ahead and grab it. Um, so let's make our sphere radius a bit bigger. Maybe like, uh, yeah, uh, 55, about 50. And then let's make sure this setup overlap all dynamic. So now, uh, basically, when we interact it, we can now equip it and so on. So we're gonna go into class defaults, go into 
So class settings, add the BPI interaction interface, double click here. And now what we will do is just go and cast to the first person uh, character. And also, oh yeah, because we cast it before. Yeah, we don't cast before, all right, don't worry. Um, I thought about because we changed the name to from third person to first person, but Unreal will already automatically, you know, change that. And also, I think we don't have any cast because we deleted that. Anyway, so get player character, and what we want to do is basically enable one thing. So let's go into the player, into the mesh, and add the skill to mesh, and this will be the weapon. And um, basically, this weapon will be in our, uh, like in our camera. We can actually be inside our camera. And we're gonna just put this here. It will be that sphere. Um, so I don't know what this sphere, this sphere. Okay, let me search it. Let me add it here. Oh, I added skull to mesh. Sorry about that. It has to be static mesh sphere. There we go. Automatically, we will pick it. Um, the color was like, uh, what color was it? This one. Let me search it. And let me apply it. There we go. And the size was 0.2. Okay, there we go. We have it here. I can just go and put it maybe into one side, so say you have it equipped, I don't know, whatever, we'll see, you know, I don't know how it looks right now. Yes, it's like we got it in the hand. <laughs> Very cheap way, but it will work, okay, you can play around with the settings. Let's make sure to disable the collision, and now we change the name to be weapon. So this by default will be disabled, so let's go into visibility and disable this. Now what I'm going to do is create two new custom events. This will be, well, sorry, one custom event, which will be equip weapon. So now I can just get the weapon and you set the visibility to be true. And then what I would do is get a new variable. And this will be um, has a weapon. And this will be set to true. There we go. So now from the weapon, I can just call this equip weapon custom event that I just created and then what I can do is just go ahead and destroy this actor so it will disappear from the ground so now because we already have the system set up so I can pick up things from the interact and this universal this uh, interface I can just go before the AI catch me go here click E and now I can equip it, as you can see so everything is going ahead and working so now I should be able to attack the player or whatever you know if I have it on uh, so let's go into the content um, and then go into the input folder and create a new action. So this will be the EA underscore and let's do like attack. And in this case again, don't need to open this, default values are good. Let's open the collection and just open up mapping, we're going to be applying our EA attack and in this case it will be the left mouse button. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into the first person character, let's right click, EA, attack, and in this case it's gonna be making sure that we can only attack if we have our weapon with our bad boy that we created, we set up here. Great, so now if so, we can go ahead and play montage, and you know what, we're gonna be using the same exact um, animation that we had for our uh, other AI, okay? We have, the, we don't have a need to make a new one, it will just work. So that we go, and from here, we're gonna actually copy our logic for our sphere trace. Okay, it will just work. So I can just copy all of this. Okay, literally copy everything like it is, paste it, and plug here. It will do exactly the same thing. Why we have to repeat again the code? There's no point. So now I can just go and add again another arrow, and this will be the, um, the attack trace pause. I don't know if it was called like that, but there we go. And just put it over here, right? And it will attack. Um, so I can just drag it. There we go, put it there. And there we go, it will do exactly what we have to do. I'm gonna basically just make it for duration in the debug type so we can preview if it's okay. So now I can just press play, go and get my sphere here. And now, there we go, let's go by behind. You can see now if I attack, this happens. So that's great. So now I can just go here. I will be attacking him. Uh, let's also do one thing, and let's make this a bit bigger. So maybe like uh, 40, and this like maybe uh, like 120. So basically, it'll be a bit easier for you because not the AI will catch you first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so we have to be careful with that. 
Um, and also let's go into our AI and apply the logic that he, you can die or he can die. So at the event, any damage. So when he receives damage, what we're going to do is literally just get the mesh and just do set simulate physics. And what this will mean is that he will just drag though into the floor. And for this, let's make sure that the collision is set up properly. So let's select our mesh, go down, and let's change this, this collision preset to be custom. And now we can put the our collision enable to be uh, query and physics. In the capsule component, make sure it's set ignore only pawn, so we're not, uh, you know, collision with its own mesh. And then after setting the ragdoll, I can just get the character move component and, and uh, set the movement mode to be none. So he will automatically stop moving. He can move anymore. So that should work. If I just go here, get my um, weapon. <laughs> okay, there we go. We have it here. I just go and attack him. If I can, there you go, come on. There we go. He died into the floor. Uh, of course, we have to um, seem to expand this a bit more into the. Oh, sorry, I changed the AI one, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry. So this is twenty-five. And this is uh, 70. Sorry, I confusing that. Make sure to set it in the player. Yeah, so 40, 20. There we go. So now, yes. Let's go. Get this over here. And you're saying, why we don't add sprint? Well, I think for this horror game, if it's more, there we go. <laughs> ah, cool, cool, cool. So we should just add a few sounds, but that's great. Um, you should also win the game right here. So let's create a UI for that. Um, but basically, I think that is it's okay to not have sprinting. It's like more into the horse thing. Uh, let's say win. Add a canvas panel, and we do is just get a image. Again, hold control, expand it, make it uh, like this, alpha zero, and then uh, put the image to be just the fade. So again, we'll fade. Yes, uh, no fades are very good. I like them a lot. And now I can just go ahead and create an animation, uh, fade in, and then uh, with an underscore, and then just add that specific fade image, and then at the start it will be like this, and then after here we can wait a bit more. You know what I mean? It's like more celebrations, like a bigger fade, and put this like this. So we like take more time, you know, to fade. There we go. And you basically won the game. We can put like a text on here. So in the middle, put the position X, Y, 0, 0, alignment 0.5, and 5, and then size to be bigger. And then in the middle, and then winner. <laughs> I don't know. Or you caught the uh, creature, whatever you want to say, right? I don't know. So with that said, there we go. We got it there, and we should just go ahead and in the event construct. So this is like the gameplay of the widget. I can just get my fade in animation and just do a uh, play animation. So automatically when we create the widget, it will just play the animation. So I can just go here into the uh, AI. So when it dies, I can just go ahead and create a widget from here. So create widget. This is like the event in damage. And just go ahead and do the win and just add it into the viewport there we go and you will see that, that will work and i can also just disable the maybe the uh, movement from the player but i think that that's not necessary um so now i can just go and test this don't worry about also winning sound when he dies too in a second but i can just get this i don't know where my ai is from. oh my god oh, oh my god i got scared in my own game <laughs> Okay, that was very embarrassing. Okay, um, I don't know. He literally disappeared. Okay, so now I guess. Okay, there we go. You call the creature. Okay, cool. Let's add some sounds. All right, let's add some more sounds. So in my case, I got this grunt. So when the creature will die, that way I will be in this in the description. Let's add also the horror ambience loop, which I got. Um, let's also add what what did just happen? Did I do some copies? Okay, um, uh, game grunt ambience the loop. There we go, and then a cinematic boom. So let's go ahead and just drag that into the uh, audio uh, folder. Close this up, and now basically this horror ambience, I can just go 
into my player character and use into the gameplay. So when the game starts, I can use uh, play sound to be copy paste and do that ambience. Ambience and also let's make sure to open that horror ambience asset and make sure the loop is on. Very, very important. So now you can see there's the horror ambience. I can maybe make it a bit louder, maybe like two. Yeah, that's maybe too much, right? I like it. Uh, okay, good. And then so let's open up the thing here and let's make that he will die and play a sound. So play it sound and this will be at location. I'm gonna play that grunt. Okay. Now the location will be the get actor location. So when the enemy is right now, and then also gonna play an attenuation. So we'll be in 3D. That's the one that we created. Uh, so that's that I can also play another sound. In this case, it will be with a bit of a delay. And then this will be our cinematic boom. So it's like, boom. You know what I mean? And the game ends. Uh, so let's try that out. This here. Okay. Uh, the cinematic boom didn't play. <laughs> um, that is okay. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's not boom. You should play this. Uh, I don't know why it didn't play, honestly. So it. Oh, play sound at location. Okay, well, it should be in 2D, but I can just play that location. It's okay. Let's try this again one more time. Now I can just go here. This here. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I did like everything at once. Let me just get this one more time. Come on, come on. I didn't get the thing. Oh my god. Okay, it's coming, it's coming. Maybe we should add some spring, right? Yes, that feels good. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and now, yes, we can start to create the environment, which will be one of the final things. So let's go ahead and do so. And for our creature enemy, we are going to be using this official Unreal Engine 5. Uh, well, no, actually, it's Unreal Engine 4, but it's compatible with Unreal Engine 5 uh, free asset. So it's called Imprinted Blade Warriors. Once again, link in the description. Let's just add it into our project. So horror game, and in this case, we have to choose the latest one that it supports, which is uh, 5.1, okay? It doesn't support 5.2, but it's okay, we'll convert it. Uh, so actually, it is compatible with 5. Uh, add to bread, and let's just wait a few seconds. Okay, so it has imported, so I can just go into Infinity Blade Warriors. There's a new folder, as you can see. Uh, character, complete character, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of them. You can pick whatever you want, okay? There were ones... Uh, but in my case, I'm going to be using use this car M underscore pit. I just found it to be okay for our enemy. You know, whatever you want, you can use whatever asset you want. But let's select this. Let's go into our BB AI and just click this arrow to replace it with the skeleton mesh. And because it is the same skeleton thing, the animations will just work, as you can see. So that is great. It looks really cool. And uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> That's it. Now for our character, we are probably going to be living in like this because you can only really see the hands, nothing crazy, but if you want to replace it, go ahead. You know now how to do so. Uh, so now we can go into the environment. Now, yes. <laughs> All right, so for the environment, I am going to be using this asset, which is an awesome, uh, like old horror mansion, uh, which actually was free in a free for the month bundle, which I don't know which month it was, but it was free. So you have to go ahead and do, and do so. And if not, you know, don't worry, there's a lot of other assets that we can use. I'm not going to really touch anything about this environment. I'm going to literally load the map, put in the things that we have in that set. So it's not nothing crazy. I'm going to use, use a quick environment. So let me just go ahead and create, uh, create bread. Now, the thing is that it says only create bread. I cannot add into my existing bread, but that will not be a problem because I can just migrate the assets later on. Um, so let me just hit create and I will now just need to wait. <laughs> All right, here it is, the map. Holy, oh my, this looks absolutely unbelievable. Like, this is crazy. Like, 
wow I, I i literally have no words like i didn't even know that this looked so cool and this literally is so big look, look at this like it is just insane so what we are going to do is just go ahead and migrate and this whole thing into our pride so what we can do is select this folder so you can see it's already like pre-made so we can just right click and migrate this so right click migrate select everything that we need which is all this doesn't really matter if we get extra things, you know. Um, no nightbar, we don't need that. Okay. You say, okay, everything by default will work. And now I can just go into my price and select my horror game. Select the content folder. And with that, we can just select and now use wait. I don't know if it will take a lot. There are a lot of assets. So just, you know, get a cup of coffee and now we'll go back. All right, so now it has migrated all of the assets. As you can see, now we have the Sega Mansion folder. So let's go ahead and open up maps. And uh, I guess it will be the map mansion. So let's open this up. Okay, so now, yes, we have the environment in our horror game Pride. So there we go. Um, so I have noticed it's a bit like darker than the original one. I don't know, there's the settings that we have to change, so on. But it still looks okay for me. Uh, if you wanna mess up with that, go ahead but look how beautiful this looks. Um, so to move around the level a bit more, you know, correctly, I would recommend to set up the tone lid so you can see a bit better. Um, and then also let's go into wall settings and let's put the game mode to be our BP uh, third person game mode, okay? You can see there's already a horror game uh, mode. Uh, this is the one that came with the pack, so don't use it. Uh, so now if I press play, I'm using my own camera control as you can see in, wow, this looks so cool. And if I turn on my flashlight, oh my, <laughs> this is great. Uh, so there you go, you can see everything without working. Uh, let's go into the player start and let's add some drawbers, okay? And we have to also add the enemy AI and so on. You get the idea. Um, so I am spawning here. Let's uh, spawn it already looking into the door. I just prefer that. And um, what I'm going to do is go into the blueprints, add the drawbar. Let's add one here, maybe. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it doesn't fit very well, but you will need to maybe delete one stand, you know, put it there. You get the, I'm gonna quickly just put some drawers, but you're meant to maybe, yeah, you know, do it a bit more your way. You get the idea. Uh, so let me start putting some drawers over here. Maybe another one here. Uh, I'm gonna quickly just put them. And I believe there's no a nav mesh volume, no. So we have to add one huge one. Uh, so let's go. Visual effects, sorry, volumes, not much bounce volume. And this will need to be blocked. Let's put like 50. And hopefully it will fill the whole thing. Let's press P. And we'll start to generate the go. So, yeah, I think it fills the whole level. Um, where is it? Yes, it does. Maybe into this room, not, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so, there we go. We have our nav mesh. You can see this works beautiful. And let's go ahead and drag in our AI into the level. I don't know where. It's gonna drop it here, but there we go. Uh, cool. So now, you know, we could use press play and wow, wow, wow. We'll hide here, escape, turn our flashlight. Just oh my god! <laughs> this looks so cool. So let's make one final thing, and it's that when the AI sees you, you're gonna be playing some heavy, you know. Uh, like violin loud sound so let's go ahead and do so this is the final change so let's go i'm gonna again leave it in the description get the chasing loop drag it into here and now we can just double click and make sure to click on looping so it will loop and let's go into our bp ai then graph and then we're gonna go into the on pawn sensing so on here what we are going to do is after we do this let's go and say spawn sound uh, at sorry, spawns on 2D. In this case, it will be our chasing loop. In this case, let's save this into variable so we can then uh, you know do things with it. So it'll be chasing uh, music or whatever I want to call it. And then what I'm going to do is also do a fade in, and it will take like maybe three seconds. Let's also make it louder. So maybe by two, we'll see how the volume works. For now, when you see the enemy. That sound should start to appear. We can test it out. And now the AI will go again to us directly. It's basically just wandering around the scene, okay? There we 
he goes there. You can see uh, it is like playing a lot of times. This is because we have to make sure that it is only it's not already playing. So we can just do a get, right click, and set is validated get. So basically, if it's not valid, okay. Basically, if the sound has not been yet created, it's very important because not that happens. We just you know we just start to create millions of uh, sounds at the same time. So let's go here. He saw me. Oh my god. Do you see the sound? Wow, it does really scare me. Oh my god. Is there? Wow, it does really scare me. Okay, so the thing is that right now he lost me, but we haven't done anything to, you know, ch stop the uh, sound. So on here, we need to do is basically uh get this right get it if it's in this time in this case it will be if it's valid and if so we are going to do a fade out and around three seconds uh now the thing is that we will need to undo this if you know if this has lost fully uh you know the player but let's see so we go down here Is the enemy. Let's see if it is us. Yeah, you can see it will never play because it's always also going ahead and fading out. So let's go ahead and fix this. So to fix this, what we can do is just make a delay of maybe like point. Uh, let's do like one whole second, okay? And we are going to get our blackboard, and then we're going to sort of set a values bool, get values bool, and then we can just get copy paste the same variable and then only if this is set to uh, true sorry to false we're gonna stop the sound okay uh, with that it should the trick because we're waiting like a full delay to check that our player is not uh, following us and then going ahead and stopping the sound so it's going up as you can see let me follow him there we go, he saw me, and he stopped seeing me, so the audio went. Do you see that? Let's try this again. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we also have to load the other map. Uh, let's do that. Oh my... That, that sh <laughs> okay, so I am being scared with my own game. This is very embarrassing, guys. Okay, please, uh, hopefully I will remember to, you know, cut that out. <laughs> uh, that was very embarrassing. Okay, um, and this should be map underscore mansion okay there we go let's try this again uh, and we're going to do is go directly into the uh player thing okay play from here so he sees me the audio is playing i don't know where to go home. he's chasing me you can see the sound is is playing oh my god oh um, okay i i i am there we go, I hit it, and the audio goes. There we go! <laughs> Everything made! Okay, so that's it guys. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could, you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. This was a full masterclass, awesome. Like, this, you, you probably learned a lot. Like, you're not gonna lie. You, you end up with this absolutely incredible game. Smash the like button. Uh, the product files will be available in my... Um, Patreon and YouTube members without this map, of course. And join my Discord server, follow me on my socials. And there we go. With all I said, bye bye. Alright, so I forgot one thing, and it's to add the weapon into our scene. So you just drag it, gonna be like here, what is this central thing? And let's also just right click and create a new material. And this will be weapon. And basically, we'll like kind of glow. So let's hold three, left click, put that in base color, but like, you know, whatever color you want. Like this will be cool and then I can just uh, multiply this by a value like for example with five and just plug it into the emissive color so, so now basically we'll glow and then I can just go into the weapon and then just apply that material 
So M underscore weapon. And there we go. Now we have it assigned there so we can pick it up and so on. So uh, that's great. So I'm gonna put more go here. And that said, if you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. I hope that you learned a lot in this massive tutorial. The profiles will be available in my Patreon and YouTube members, except the environment, of course. During my Discord server, follow me on my socials. And now, yes, with all I said, bye bye.